Tonight, a teenager stabbed in a mugging gone wrong. A schoolboy dragged to safety as his home is engulfed in flames. And the fight to save a piece of history, why this beach boat isn't allowed to be saved. Live across Western Australia, GWN 7 News, with Shauna Willis. Good evening. First tonight, a teenager has been stabbed repeatedly in a suburban street after a gang tried to steal his wallet. The men became violent when the boy refused to hand anything over. Residents say it's left them shocked and scared. Three cuts to his arm and a stab wound to his chest. This is the result of an attack on a 17-year-old boy walking home alone last night, all because he refused to hand over money and his phone to his attackers. It happened around 6 o'clock on the busy Lucy Victoria Avenue in Australind. A couple of boys approached me and one of them asked me if I had any money. I just said, nah. And the other boy sort of said, do you have anything in your pocket? And I said, no, nah, it's just my phone. And then one of them went to go grab me, so I went to push him away. And that's when one of the men pulled out a knife. The boy has been left so scared, he's asked us not to show his face or reveal his name in case they try to attack him again. The teenager was walking along this footpath and was only metres away from his brother's home when the three men came out of nowhere. Just a bit shocked that, you know, you can't go for a walk and not have to worry about anything. Luckily, the cuts aren't too deep, but it's left residents shaken. Well, we've been here 26 years and nothing has happened like this has happened here before. Yeah, I've been here since 1983 and it's a lovely, peaceful place, so I'm hoping it's a one-off. The men are described as having dark skin and age 18 to 20. Anne-Marie Leonard in Australind, GWN 7 News. A man has kicked down the door of a burning home to save a teenager inside who was trying to put the fire out. It's not known how the fire started, but we're told the severely damaged home is now a crime scene. Tasha Tanya has details. The Geraldton house went up in flames at around 4.30 yesterday afternoon. It started in the backyard and the estimated damage is in the hundreds of thousands. Neighbours tell us a woman was inside when the fire started, but she thought the smoke she could smell was from a nearby burn-off. That's when her son came home from school to find his home alight. We are told he was quite distressed, but he went inside to hose the fire down himself. A resident kicked down the front door and dragged him out. And tried to go in through the smoke, but it was just it was too much, so I went around the side of the house and there the young fellow was. Ambulance officers had to treat him for smoke inhalation. It took firefighters around 40 minutes to put the fire out and the back of the house is now so severely damaged the insurance company says it's on the brink of collapsing. They also say it's now being treated as a crime scene. How the fire started is still unknown. Tasha Tanya in Geraldton, GWN 7 News. Albany's self-proclaimed number one arsonist has been jailed for a year for setting fire to an old warehouse. The 20-year-old made a video of himself and two others starting the fire at the Vital Food Warehouse in Albany last October, then boasting about it online. The fire caused around $25,000 damage. He was sentenced to an immediate one-year prison term after pleading guilty to criminal damage by fire and aggravated burglary. Well, the chairman of the Kimberley Land Council is planning to set up a permanent camp at Broome's Cable Beach in protest against remote community closures. He claims the move will also kill Broome's $140 million tourism industry because there will be so many homeless people on the streets. The state government says their communities are unlivable and they're struggling with drug and alcohol abuse as well as violence. But Kimberley Land Council Chairman Anthony Watson says Aboriginal people need to be able to control their own lives. We need to have a plan ready if people are going to be moved or people are going to stay within the community that they need to be well looked after. Um, if they do move into towns like Broome, what will it cost um, the the Shire of Broome, so in jobs and tourism and 
and such. Anthony is threatening to set up a permanent camp on Broome's iconic Cable Beach in protest. Local authorities say they'll have no choice but to penalise him. In relation to camping on Cable Beach, well it is a democracy but the Shire does have local laws and if and when it occurs We'll deal with it under our local laws. Anthony believes Broome's massive tourism industry will suffer under the move. It already has a problem with homeless people from the community sleeping rough in town. One is a short stay accommodation uh, and I'm hopeful announcements will be made very shortly in relation to that. The second is a dedicated camping area in which we now have all agencies supportive of this initiative by the Shire. I just wait on the government to um do the next move. Rachel Chandler, GWN 7 News. An alleged international meth syndicate has been uncovered in our Pilbara. About $150,000 worth of methamphetamine has been seized in a joint operation. Police believe the huge haul was imported from overseas. It's understood nearly 300 grams of the drug was found. A 27-year-old Karatha man has been charged and, if found guilty, could face up to 25 years behind bars. And police say they found more evidence of WA's growing ice epidemic on our roads. In the space of two and a half hours over the weekend, five consecutive drivers tested positive to methamphetamine in the southwest. The drivers ranged in age from 31 to 47 years. People who are trying to save a historic Pearl Lugger, which beached during a storm more than a week ago, have been told they can't save it. Authorities believe it's too dangerous and it contains hundreds of litres of diesel. But nobody is more upset about the situation than the man who calls the boat home. It's a bureaucratic boat battle, but it's not just any boat. It's a home with a lot of history. Got a phone call and then just raced down here and they told me my boat was on the beach. Dave Thompson's wooden boat washed up more than a week ago after a storm in Bunbury's Kumbana Bay and now it won't budge. I've just got to try everything I can to get it off, off the beach mm -hmm. and hopefully if that all goes well, we'll start again. Kestrel Menina was built in Broome in 1956. She's a pearl lugger and one of the very few boats left from WA's pearling history. And now the community is rallying to save her. But the Department of Transport has told them they can't touch it. Dave's boat is not insured. We just feel very sad that it's a very special boat and Dave's a, a battler. He's a pensioner and he's tried really hard and he's always been helpful to many of us who have owned wooden boats in Fremantle. But there's more. There are concerns the 1,500 litres of diesel on board is leaking. A GoFundMe account has even been set up to save her. So I know there's lots of tragedies in the world but this one's close to home and we just want to help. Well, I've never asked for charity before. Um, that's a bit hard to deal with. Tasha Campbell in Bunbury, GWN 7 News. It was a lovely day right across most of our state today. Joining us with the details is Anne-Marie Leonard. Hello, Shauna. If you're not quite ready to let go of the sunshine, don't worry. You have a few more days to get your vitamin D. The mornings may be getting cold. It was just five degrees in Collie overnight, but it feels like summer hasn't just left us yet, but there is some rain on the way. So join me in weather for the full forecast. A multi-million dollar prescribed burning announcement, that's next. Plus, a most unlikely friendship, the bird and dog defying nature. Stay in touch 24-7 with GWN 7 News. There has been a death on a Pilbara mine site. The accident happened around 6 o'clock last night at the Aditya Birla Minerals Nifty Copper Mine. It's the second mine site death in WA this year. Well, the state budget is two days away and there's a lot of contention surrounding who might miss out. The opposition says we rely too much on the mining boom during the good times and it means West Aussies are now going to have to pay. 
There are always winners and losers at state budget time, but the state opposition says we should expect more losers this time, accusing the Barnett government of financial mismanagement. The government won't stop spending in the electorates that it feels it must win to secure a third term. Uh, and what I also know is that a third term of the Barnett government will simply mean more chaotic financial management. Shadow Treasurer Ben Wyatt says the government has relied too much on commodity prices, namely iron ore, and the good times are over, leaving us in serious trouble. So, I mean, this is the end of uh, what has been the, the greatest period of wealth creation in Western Australia, uh, and the Liberal Party has left us with huge deficits and high debt. Political scientist Dr Martin Drum agrees there won't be too many people happy about what comes out of Thursday's budget. I think the people that can afford uh, basic household costs at the moment won't be impacted as heavily. So when those costs rise, and we were predicting about a 4% rise on a lot of basic utility costs. He predicts the losers will be anyone already struggling with the cost of living. And while country WA shouldn't fare too badly, we shouldn't expect any big ticket items. Country people will continue to be funded under royalties for regions um, and that money will continue to flow because it's been budgeted for. But I don't think there'll be some big picture um, items. Maylin Chu, GWN 7 News. A further $20 million is going to be spent on prescribed burning to reduce the risk of bushfires in our southwest. But the announcement has been met with anger. It was one of the most devastating bushfires in WA's history. The Northcliff bushfires tore through around 100,000 hectares of forest earlier this year. And now, as the town recovers, the state government has announced an extra $20 million will be spent on prescribed burning. Prescribed burning uh, is an essential tool. In fact, it's one of the most essential tools uh, in order to enable us to manage bushfire when it inevitably breaks out. Manjim Up Shire President Wade DeCampo knows all too well the devastating effects of bushfires, having experienced the Northcliffe blaze firsthand. There's no doubt anyone who disbelieves the science, come down, have a look, and uh, we can show you exactly what prescribed burning does and how it saves the environment and towns and lives. But the announcement has been slammed by the Wilderness Society of WA. We believe that there needs to be far more focus put on things like increasing our capacity to detect and rapidly put out fires as soon as they are detected rather than waiting for them to turn into wildfires. Prescribed burning is not a silver bullet. Uh, bushfire will still occur. That risk is always there within the bush. Tasha Campbell, GWN 7 News. You often ask us for more good news stories. Well, you've got it. This is a report about an unlikely friendship on a WA farm between a magpie and a kelpie. This is going to blow your mind. A magpie that thinks it's a dog or a dog that believes it's a bird. Whichever way you look at it, this relationship is pretty unbelievable. Yeah, oh, best friends. Yep. Yep, um, every, every time Flash goes down, runs down to the paddock, Pew will be right behind him flying along. And... The magpie was adopted by the Helms family in January when they found it injured on their Brunswick farm. Since then, the magpie and nine-month-old Kelpie Flash have become inseparable. They named the bird Pew, like the cartoon character from Footlock Flats. Yeah, have a lot of fun, don't you? And living with you is a ball. But don't be fooled by what you know about magpies, because this bird wouldn't hurt a fly. I think they're quite dangerous, you know, pecking at shiny things like your eyes, but yeah, this one seems to be quite tame and friendly, good with kids. <laughs> That's right, they sleep together, play together, and Pew even helps Flash out with dental work. And while Flash tries to be gentle, Pew can take a good smack to the head. And neither of the two are camera shy. Anne-Marie Leonard in Brunswick, GWN 7 News. The classic odd couple. Well, this year's only regional waffle match. We have all the coverage of that massive event next. Plus a football thrashing. The team beaten by more than 130 points. Here's tomorrow's lowest fuel prices for where you live. If your town's not on the list, check the Fuel Watch website or call 1300 550 808.
Bunbury boxing star Nathaniel May has taken out the World Boxing Organisation title, moving him to number 13 in the world. It was Nathaniel Chicky May's second WBO title fight and he proved his worth against tough competition Lloyd Judeliza from the Philippines. The 19-year-old says it was his hardest fight to date. We had an eight-week training camp, so we trained uh, three times a day, every day of the week. So um, it was pretty intense. But uh, like you said, uh, it's just what you have to do for this sport, really. Nathaniel will be back in the ring August 1st in Bunbury for the WBO Oceana title. Well, Matt Barker has hosted its first waffle match in six years. And didn't the crowds come out for it? It was a close match, too. More than 2,000 people showed up at Mount Barker's new grounds, with hundreds arriving early to secure their spot to watch Claremont take on Swan Districts. I'm absolutely ecstatic. Uh, the day so far has turned out perfect. We've been admitting people into the ground from around 8 o'clock this morning. Well, I think it's a great initiative uh, to bring a waffle game to, to this region, which has been a fantastic breeding ground for, for the Claremont Footy Club for so many years. It all started with an air squadron helping to celebrate the ground's official opening. Then it was on to business. After winning the toss, things were looking up for the Swans, and some early fumbles proved costly for the Tigers. Swans forward Jason Daniels was reported after a rough tackle to Brandon France, and scores were level at the first quarter, but the Tigers managed to widen the margin, with Albany's Darcy Cameron helping them dominate and getting them over the line with a goal in the final quarter. We only have um, today Darcy Cameron playing, he's a local Albany boy, but we have a number playing throughout our reserve side and our Colts side. Thomas Ledger also shone for the Tigers, kicking one of the goals for the victors. Simon Donovan kicked two goals for the Swans and proved to be one of the match's standout players. In the end, it was Claremont 10-18-78 to Swan Districts 10-7-67. Kendall O'Connor in Mount Barker, GWN 7 News. One of our league teams has suffered a shocking defeat at the hands of last year's Premiers. They were beaten by 137 points, but they're nothing if not optimistic. The coach still thinks they're in with a chance for the finals. The Broom Bulls were no match against last season's grand final winner, Cable Beach. They went down to the Premiership players an incredible 147 points to 10. The Bulls coach, Ben Sarsfield, had to play to make up the numbers and they didn't score their first goal until the third quarter. Our guys tried, um, tried as much as they could and you know, we're a bit undersized, a bit undermanned at times, but um, they... Uh, Full credit to them, you know, they're, they're a good side and they'll, um, they'll be right up there this year. Cable Beach was quite even across the ground for the whole game. They constantly won the ball in the centre and managed to keep control of it. Last week we made some really ordinary decisions and, and we paid for it, but this week they just played really well, I thought, and... Um you know, we've got a long way to go yet. Cable Beach number three, Daniel Cox, on the wing was a standout, taking possession of the ball whenever he came near it. Games like this, we'll take something from, and if we can stick together, then hopefully, you know, the, throughout the year, it, uh, we start to show some really good signs. We set our goal to win the grand final. Um, and if we set it any lower than that, that would be disappointing, I think. Rachel Chandler, GWN 7 News. Anne-Marie Leonard has all your weather details next and ahead in seven years, unlocking the secrets of the deep on board as researchers tag sharks off WA. Hello everyone, I hope you've had a wonderful Tuesday. Let's have a look how today shaped up. Across the Kimberley, temperatures reached between the low to mid 30s today. Our state's hot spots were at Wyndham and Fitzroy Crossing, 35 degrees there. And we had similar temps as we head to the Pilbara. Port Hedland reached 33 and a tad cooler in Exmouth, 29. Those warm temps continue as we head south, 29 in Geraldton. Cooler in Mika Thara, 24 there. And it was even cooler inland today. Kalgoorlie only reached 18. 18. A lovely autumn day in the south today. Bunbury reached 22. A little cool in Collie overnight. It was 5 degrees there, but it did warm up to 20. And some nice temps on the southeast today. 17 for Ravensthorpe and Esperance and 20 for the Southern Cross. Not much rain around before 9am. As you can see, most of it was down here on the southeast coast. You may have felt a drizzle in the southwest, but most of the rain was in the southwest. We've got, oh no, the southeast, sorry, 12 metres 
Jesus was recorded in Metla. And we just had three meals in Denmark and Albany. Let's have a look how the rest of the week is shaping up. If you got some rain today, that's all you're going to see there for a while. Tomorrow there could be a light shower in the south interior and gold fields. And there's some gusty winds in the morning in the north of our state. Then on to Thursday, there's no rainfall at all. When more gusty winds for the morning in the north of our state. But on Friday, the rain is back. We've got showers developing over the southwest district and that's going to be during the day and increasing near the southwest capes in the evening. And again, some more winds in our north. On Saturday, we've got showers forecast for the southwest, western parts of the Gascoyne and that could extend eastwards to the west goldfields during the day. Here's a look at tomorrow's weather. Look at the Kimberley. It's all sunshine tomorrow. Derby 35, Broome 33 and sunshine continues for the Pilbara, a lovely 31 in Onslow, Caratha and Marble Bar. Carnarvon is sunny and heading for a top of 31, Mikathara 23 and it's a lovely day in Geraldton tomorrow, it's sunshine and 28. Another lovely day for the southwest but you may want to rug up tonight in Collie, Bridgetown and Mansham up overnight and it's going to be a lovely sunny day for Narragin and a top of 21. There's some light winds around for the southeast and chilly morning for Norseman, only 6 there but warming up to 19 and it may be the only cloud in the state tomorrow is hanging around the gold fields. Kalgoorlie is heading for a top of 18 tomorrow. Now to our waters. It's a rough day on the northern waters. There's a strong wind warning in place tomorrow. It's going to be all the way from the Kimberley to the Gascoyne coast. And those rough conditions continue on the central waters. There's a strong wind warning in place for Geraldton, Lansland and Perth coast tomorrow. And it's not much nicer on the southern waters. We've got some moderate to strong conditions there as well. And let's have a look around the nation. A sunny day for Brisbane tomorrow, top of 24. Rain for Sydney and 17. But if you're heading to Perth tomorrow, it's going to be a lovely 25 and all sunshine. That's all from me tonight. Good night. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Well, that's GWN7 News for this Tuesday. Head to our Facebook page to get in touch and join the conversation. And we're on YouTube now too. Have a great night.